there's this discussion about intelligence. What really defines intelligence? Um, what would be the defining characteristic if we were to do, uh, you know, the uh, artificial general intelligence? What would what would separate that intelligence from the, you know, the unintel the the um, you know, the the, uh, the sort of robotic AI intelligence we know right now, the sort of rigid and uh, not very, uh, what's, the, what's the word? It doesn't feel natural right now. We're still at this point where you can, you can see the uncanny valley. Uh, but there will come a time when artificial intelligence, uh, it, I mean, at this rate, there will come a time when we already have reached the point where somebody can be fooled in conversation over text by um, a machine like a chat program, but you know, in time, AI will be able to inevitably. It's just, it's just the math bears out. Uh, inevitably, it'll be really difficult to determine, uh, even in person, once we get to that point. But I'm going to talk a little bit about intelligence because I, you know, I like to take, I like to take a big swing at things sometimes and just see if I can hit, you know, hit like a base hit. I don't need to hit a home run. I, you know, call me out trying to steal second, but I do want to take at least a shot at a base hit. And if I get a ground out, then at least I tried. Okay. So this is my tweet on intelligence. I don't think it's very easy to see. I get boxed out. Oh, no, that's stupid. So intelligence is tough to define. So, okay, I'll read the tweet first and then I'll break it down. Intelligence is tough to define. If scientists are correct, i.e., that is to say, free will is an illusion and our brain chooses the path and we rationalize it later, perhaps intelligence could be defined as the difference in real-world performance between internal world agency and external world inertia. So, uh, based on uh, what he said on one of his recent periscopes, Scott Adams talked a little bit about the external world inertia. inertia. Um, but I'm going to go in order here. So, intelligence is tough to define. You know, if you're going to take a swing at something that people in general, even some of our brightest minds, have had some difficulty defining, then of course it's better to just to sort of admit up front, look, this isn't the truth. This is a shot at, you know, trying to trying to advance the conversation, add an idea to the pile, because there's so many millions of people, but the more that this information aggregates, all, all these perspectives and these philosophies and these observations, the more information we have about our world, you know, the more successful people can be. You know, it just people start to make the connections between one thing and another, and eventually, you know, industries start to evolve from all these different, uh, you know, the connectivity of the internet has made it possible to certainly uh, advance uh, technology faster you know it's it's really it's really pushed us forward so free will is a is a tough question uh, because some people believe in free will some people don't believe in free will some people uh, don't understand the meaning of free will uh, some people um, you know have their own interpretation of free will so it's hard for them to you know define it with uh, another person and sort of share the same version of it. But I mean, there's, there's a pretty, com just really two common uh, directions free will can go. So some scientists and some uh, intellectuals and so forth believe that free will is an illusion because every single interaction since the Big Bang has, uh, of course, rendered uh, everything with a sor sort of inertia where it's just always moving, it's always moving in a direction. 
it's always moving, moving, and everything sort of just everything leads to this point, and and the idea that we have, uh, and and please forgive me if I'm not describing it correctly, uh, this interpretation. It's sort of the Sam Harris version where he just tells you that the base scientific reality of causality and all these things. Now we now things can change, but the. Um, as human beings, our our agency, I guess, in this case, is restricted to some degree by uh, the fact that you know I can't, I don't have the free will to just travel across the universe and in a, in a millisecond. Like I have, I am stuck within uh, these bounds, and that's just a a fact of uh, like like I said, just every particle collision from the Big Bang to this point. That's the Free will is an illusion, more or less. Again, I, you can always look up. Uh, you know, I always say to check with subject matter experts and certainly go out and look at other uh, information on that if you'd like to really uh, dig into free will. It's a great topic. If you haven't really dug into it, I think I, I'm sure you'll find it in interesting. So, our brain, like I said, our brain chooses the path, and we rationalize it later. So basically. Under this impression of free will, you uh, your brain has already predecided what's going to happen, and then you have the illusion of choice because later on you're like, oh, you know, you are always going to ha to have to do this action or have this thing or consume this item or whatever it is or say this word, but you know, there's your behavior is somewhat predictable based on all the conditioning you've had since since birth and all that conditioning is based on all these interactions that happened endless trillions infinite interactions since the big bang uh so you know I, i'm going with this definition of it uh because why not it, it makes makes sense to me it makes sense to me but I, I also don't think that it's necessarily great in a real world context because it sort of undermines agency, which is already being undermined by certain people and certain groups. Uh, in an ideological sense, there's a lot of people that are undermining agency right now. So I don't like to push this idea that, oh, if there's you know free will, you don't have it. It doesn't exist. And I can see the argument for it, but I just, I, I don't know. It's one of those things. So I say perhaps intelligence could be defined as the difference in real world performance, keyword real world, between internal world agency and external world inertia. So the difference in real world performance between internal world agency and external world inertia. So in the real world, we have our mental image of what the world is, but that's not necessarily reality. It's reality to us. What we see and what we feel and what we experience is its own, it's our internal reality. It's our internal world. And in our internal world, we do have on this plane of existence and on this plane of awareness and consciousness, we do have agency. That's why I'm always careful about, you know, free will. I would say that I believe in free will because I look at it more closely to this uh, real world free will, real world human free will, where you're able to make decisions. And yes, um, this is where the where we t we're talking about agency and inertia. So external world inertia is what you cannot control. You can't control, of course, all the things that happen naturally, the world revolving around the sun and so on and so forth. And everything on a macro and a micro level. You can't really stop any of that. And also there's other people. And really, if you believe in freedom, you should believe in erring on the side of not stopping them from having their freedom and doing what they want. You should not restrict the movement and restrict and try to control other people if you can avoid it. Um, of course, lawmakers have to find a way to um, use positive authoritarianism, which is what we call law, 
and they try to make sure that society and the world runs in a very organized way. Uh, so other people and environmental factors and all the stuff that is just perpetual and can't be stopped, that's external world inertia. You know, like if you're playing a game and there's enemies coming at you, that's inertia. Um, they're, they're trying to stop you, you're trying to stop them, and your performance in stopping them and taking agency and sort of stopping the onslaught of space invaders or whatever it might be, that is you um, taking your internal world uh, agency and deciding to uh, affect the external world. And I guess intelligence is that intelligence is it. You gotta play smart. You gotta play smart. You can't just pick up the control. Say if we, if we contextualize it or frame it as a video game. You can't just pick up the controller and press random buttons. It doesn't do anything. You have to uh, abide by the rules of the game and abide by the rules uh, of, of, your, of, your, um, of your physical reality. Okay? You know? Physical and the abstract inside the game. So, you gotta be smart and you need to have, again, a certain kind of intelligence for different kinds of operations. And there's other things too, but I, I was taking a shot at it and I think I did a reasonably good job, but you can be the judge. <laughs>